Well, with the three goddesses, we have we have several layers of meaning with these works. One is the the technical uh, ability of creating a group of three women um, in integrating them in sculpture, so they're not like three separate units, like stiff figures lined up. They're actually interconnected. One is lying in the lap of the other one in part. Um, they're tiered in a, on a diagonal coming down, so we have one figure up above and then they flow down. The integration of those three uh, forms of the human form together as a group is a tour de force of how to integrate people with each other. Um, yet they're keeping and we, we can sense that they're separate we're, they're separate people. So we're not confused. It's not like it's um, that they're literally merged together. Um, so that's that's an amazing thing. The other thing is the wet technique of the, the clothing. So how the clothing is draped on the nude bodies and we have a strong sense of these female figures. We see their armpits and their arms, their breasts, their knees. Um, that is, uh, the, the anatomy is all there, very fluid, much more relaxed than the, the, the sculptures from earlier, um, had a stiff quality. So there's a very flowing, very natural, and the grouping of the three people. Then we also have that these are goddesses, and the quality of, of the goddesses are made in the image of real women. And so that's an interesting uh, development in the Greeks, is that they saw their gods as being human. And so uh, they used uh, you know, beauty and grace and proportions of, of human beings to say, these are godlike qualities. So one of the questions you have to think about was when you're dealing with the ancient Greeks is, it's not, it's not that the gods were so separate, that the gods were basically good humans. <laughs> so it's a very pro-humanity uh, aspect of the, of the Greeks.